and viva in the exam can be like so dr vajit we'll start with you uh, please identify the equipment which every student every neonatologist must know about so you please read up about it you can watch videos on youtube about it and get to know a little more about it so uh, okay so i have uh, put down a few answers if we could quickly go through it so the initial settings recommended for a tps resuscitator are setting a gas flow rate of 8 to 10 liters per minute there is a maximum pressure relief valve which you set at 40 cm of water you set the pip at 15 to 20 and pwp at 3 to 5 cm of water if you set it for a positive pressure ventilation you can give free flow oxygen through a tps resuscitator if you occlude the peep valve and hold the mask loosely on the face advantages is you can provide consistent pressure with a reliable control of the peak inspiratory pressure as well as the pwp you can also give 100% oxygen and titrate it between 21 to 100% because we connect this to a blender and the most important thing is there is no operator fatigue from bagging however it requires a compressed gas supply so sometimes it might be difficult to use it in places where you don't have a compressed gas supply or even during transport if you don't have a cylinder the pressures need to be set prior to use and you cannot change the inflation pressures very easily during resuscitation there is a risk of providing prolonged inspiratory time if you occlude the peep valve for too long and 100% uh, oxygen may be harmful in preterm infants so it's very important to make sure that you give blended oxygen and target the preductal fio or saturations and there, thereby set the fio2 so this is the second uh, piece of equipment for you dr vajit what is this so please read before your exam this is a very very basic equipment that we use in neonatology day in and day out and you are expected to know everything about it so there are several valves in the ambu bag we'll start with uh, an expiratory valve which is a circular valve uh, at near the end which connects to the mask or the tube which allows the air to escape if whenever the patient breathes out then there is a, a pop off valve which will pop off at a pressure of 40 cm of water in some bags there is a facility to have a peep valve so that we can understand what peep is going on and we can also provide peep otherwise ordinarily this bag cannot be used to provide peep to a spontaneously breathing uh, baby then there is an inlet valve at the rear end through which air and oxygen enter this is a one way valve which will allow gases to enter and it will close when the bag is squeezed and it will remain closed and the bag opens again so that uh, this remains constantly inflated and it doesn't require a constant flow of gas to remain inflated unlike the flow inflating anesthesia bag some uh, bags would be provided with a rebreathing uh, reservoir with a closed reservoir and there is a valve here at the end of the closed reservoir which is a pressure release valve again this is a safety mechanism which is provided and i will talk about it shortly there is one more valve here at the patient end which is the fish mouth valve which which can be seen uh, when we look through the opening which connects to the patient end again this is a one way valve which allows only forward flow of gas towards the patient it does not allow gas to re enter from the patient end from the patient whenever the baby exhales and that will be released from the uh, expiratory valve i hope this is clear and uh, i sincerely request all students to really go through this in details and remember all these uh, valves and connections so what is the use of the pressure regulatory valve it regulates the pressure generated inside the bag and once the uh, once the reservoir is filled with oxygen the valve at the inlet uh, and the uh, inspiratory valve at air outlet opens so the continuous flow of oxygen is achieved it can also help in providing a little bit of peep however when the reservoir is completely full of oxygen the excess oxygen leaks out from the valve adapter to the atmosphere and vice versa when there is no oxygen in the reservoir uh, while the bag reinflates air is drawn in through the openings on the valve adapter thus delivering at least room air for resuscitation so this acts as a safety feature of the uh, bag with a closed reservoir
what are the indications of bag and mask during resuscitation if the baby is apneic or gasping after initial steps heart rate is less than 100 beats per minute or there is central cyanosis not improving with free flow of oxygen one would start bag and mask ventilation or positive pressure ventilation with a uh, bag and mask or a tps resuscitator however one needs to definitely be certain that there is no congenital diaphragmatic hernia or any suspected lung malformations during which bag and mask would be contraindicated so uh, can we can we have another student take a couple of questions? Okay, I will go through the answers now. So instructions for use in manual mode are when whenever we anticipate that a new baby is arriving, we will put the warmer in manual mode, 100% heater output. Once the baby has arrived, uh, one should connect the skin probe and move it to a servo mode. During rapid warming of a hypothermic baby, till 34 degrees Celsius, one carries out rapid rewarming. Thereafter, the warming will happen at the rate of 0.5 to 1 degrees per hour. So then the warmer temperature will be set only 1 degree above the baby temperature. Once the baby reaches that temperature over half an hour to 1 hour, we would increase it by 1 degree further. So beyond 34 degrees, we do not do rapid rewarming. We will do only slow rewarming. Also in the labor room, when we are attending a delivery, the manual mode can be kept on uh, before the baby arrives. It keeps giving an alarm every 10 to 15 minutes in the manual mode, indicating that the bed is warm and ready to use. A little bit about application of the skin probe. So prepare the skin using a... Uh, uh, an alcohol or spirit swab in case uh, there is vernix or there is uh, if the area is not clean to ensure good adhesion to the skin. The probe will be applied to the right, right hypochondrium in supine position and to the flank in prone position. Check the sensor probe regularly to ensure that it is in place and that the metal surface is flat and in contact with the baby's skin. Ensure that the skin probe does not come in contact with the bed. Otherwise, it starts sensing the bed temperature. And sometimes uh, it is better to cover the probe with a reflective cover pad if it's available. Do not apply the probe to bruised skin. Do not apply it to even clear plastic dressings. Uh, or do not apply clear plastic dressings over the probe. Do not use fingernails to remove skin surface probes and do not use or do not reuse any disposable probe. How will you clean the warmer when the equipment is in use? So when there is a baby housed in a radiant warmer, all approachable external surfaces should be cleaned daily with an antiseptic solution like bacillosid 2% or 2% glutaraldehyde. Spirit, chlorhexidine or uh, Sterilium or other organic solvents should not be used to clean the glass panels or display panels because they start getting a little hazy. For the reusable probe, uh, alcohol swab can be used. Every seventh day, the baby uh, if there is a baby under a warmer, every seventh day, shift the baby to another cloth or uh, another cot. Uh, clean the equipment thoroughly first with a light detergent solution and then by antiseptic solution. And all detachable assemblies are also to be treated similarly. Dr. Swati, we can move on to a next student. Dr. Yeah, Michael. I actually asked for that, but nobody yeah. responded. So oh, no, I my asked... cursor stopped moving. So I just... yeah. Dr. Yeah, Mayuri. Can we... Yeah, can we have another student? It's on phototherapy. Okay. So for Petum babies, there is a different device called JM105, which is uh, permitted for use in preterm. So I'll quickly go over the answers. So transcutaneous bilirubinometers measure the spectral reflectance of bilirubin by determining the difference between the optical densities of light which are uh, which are emitted from the measuring uh, end. These optical signals are then converted to electrical signals by a photocell and they are processed by a microprocessor to generate a transcutaneous bilirubin value <coughs> in milligrams per deciliter or micromoles per liter, whatever you set on the device to read it as. The major skin components which impart spectral reflectance in the neonate are melanin, dermal maturity, hemoglobin, and bilirubin. 
तो समटाइम्स मेलेनिन एंड डोमल मेच्योरिटी कूड इंटरफेयर विद द मेजरमेंट और द विद द लेवल्स व्हिच द मशीन डिस्प्लेस इट कैन बी मेजर्ड एट द फोरहेड और द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द स्टर्नम एडवांटेज इज इट्स नॉन इनवेसिव सो यू कैन डिक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ सैंपलिंग प्रोसीजर्स रिक्वायर्ड इन बेबीज however limitations remain that at higher bilirubin ranges of more than 15 mg per deciliter it significantly tends to underestimate the sear, total serum bilirubin and therefore has limited value also in 5% of the neonates the value may be grossly abnormal therefore clinical assessment of jaundice along with a transcutaneous bilirubinometry should be used to decide the need for blood sampling to confirm the serum bilirubin levels and this can safeguard against errors so um can you talk about this okay good so i'll again quickly go through all the answers mechanism of action uh the led phototherapy primarily uh, acts only in the very superficial skin and subcutaneous tissues up to a depth of around 2 mm and it converts bilirubin into water soluble photo products with a non toxic and excreted through the intestine and the urine the spectrum of the phototherapy light is around 425 to 475 uh, nanometers uh, sorry that's a mistake not millimeters there is photo isomerization uh, where the z isomers get converted to e isomers on exposure to light however the clearance is low and these photo isom uh, photo isomers get excreted in the bile but this is a reversible reaction structural isomerization is slow but irreversible where bilirubin gets converted to lumirubin and gets excreted rapidly and the formation of bilirubin is directly proportional to the dose of phototherapy the third is the photo oxidation reaction which is even slower reaction and it leads to formation of a water a colorless water soluble product which gets excreted in the urine intensive phototherapy is defined as uh, irradiance in the blue to blue green spectrum 430 to uh, 490 nanometers of at least 30 microvolt per centimeter square per nanometer delivered to as much of the infant surface area as possible routinely at a distance of about 10 to 15 centimeters from the baby however it can be kept as close to the baby as possible because this is a cold light source side effects do not very uh, severe or do not very common babies can develop a rash sometimes overheating dehydration and diarrhea because they keep uh, excreting all the photo products of bilirubin and it causes a little bit of osmotic diarrhea retinal damage uh, is a fear and, and it is prevented by shielding the eyes dna damage can also happen by phototherapy cytokine production is increased by the peripheral mononuclear cells plus photo oxidative effects if the baby is on intravenous lipids proteins and drugs like amphotericin b these need to be covered the whole iv set needs to be covered and protected from photo oxidation other than that studies have also shown increase in the mean cerebral blood flow in preterm as well as term babies and short term behavioral changes in term infants mainly because of separation from the mother which is better continuous or intermittent phototherapy there hasn't been a very clear cut uh, answer on that however no phototherapy is ever continuous because it always gets interrupted during feeding and brief periods of holding however when we provide intensive phototherapy for high levels of uh, jaundice uh, interruptions should be minimal or avoided when should we stop phototherapy it may be discontinued when a term in a term baby if the serum bilirubin falls below 14 to 15 mg per deciliter if it was commenced at a bilirubin of more than 15 or 2 mg per dl below the phototherapy line on the jaundice graph we would observe the child for um, a rebound especially in hemolytic settings for the next 24 hours discharge may not be delayed to observe for rebound in the non hemolytic jaundices and also if phototherapy is initiated too early and discontinued before 3 to 4 days of life then a follow up is mandatory to reassess for jaundice should i continue dr kavita yeah i think we can take another another instruction 
वन मोर ओके तो डॉक्टर नो एक्सेट्रा ओके सो वील क्विकली गो थ्रू दी आंसर्स तो फॉर न्यूनेटल रिसोसिटेशन एज राइटली सेट साइज जीरो एंड वन स्ट्रेट ब्लेड और मिलर ब्लेड आर रिकमेंडेड जीरो जीरो इज ऑप्शनल वॉट डज वन चेक इन द लैरिंग स्कोप वन द फर्स्ट थिंग इज एवरी डिलीवरी रूम नर्सरी इमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट शुड हैव वन लैरिंग स्कोप द हैंडल शुड बी चेक वन शुड हैव रिप्लेसेबल बैटरीज अवेलेबल वन शुड हैव एक्स्ट्रा बल्ब अवेलेबल and of course the uh, set side uh, sized blades should be available the laryngoscope is cleaned with spirit and not dipping it in anything because it will spoil all the uh, electrical work inside the laryngoscope so we clean it from the outside with spirit so what is rapid sequence intubation this is pre medication for a non emergent intubation so whenever we have a planned intubation in the nicu one should try to go through all these steps so step 1 is giving the baby an analgesic like fentanyl uh, followed by a vagolytic like atropine paralysis is optional but if one chooses to do so it can be achieved by giving rocuronium however in preterm babies especially those who are um, to be given in short we would avoid paralyzing the baby to facilitate fast extubation and sometimes one may want to give a sedative to the baby only vigorous term babies as per the unit protocol and as per the provider discretion so why do we need to think about rapid sequence uh, intubation and pre medications that's because endotracheal intubation in neonates is associated with pain discomfort and cardio respiratory instability and use of pre medication will reduce the pain airway trauma and adverse physiological responses like bradycardia hypertension intracranial bleed and uh, hypoxia it may prolong the time before intubation however after the pre medication is administered it has been found that the procedure time and success rate is much better and uh, a uh, tracheal intubation without use of analgesia or sedation should be performed only during resuscitation in the delivery room or for life threatening situations which are associated with uh, unavailability of iv access so um, shall i go on um, dr swati i think we'll have to stop because yeah, we have we'll the have next to... yes that's right that's right okay so thank you very much i hope this has sensitized uh, the candidates to start Yes, yes. You're muted, Doctor Smith. So please read up about instruments and a little related uh, stuff as well, so that you can answer questions which are thrown at you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor Swati. I think must know list you covered, and uh, the students. Thanks, Vajit and Mayur. I I'm sure they got a feel of the exam also.